Hello and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and this week's video tutorial on the history brush. Now just a word of warning before we start, this video and the example I'm going to share with you will make a greater deal of sense if you've already participated or at the very least watched my dodge tool and history panel tutorials. I'll make sure there's a link on the website for easy access but I do recommend you check them out before you watch this one. I'm working on an image here called Spooky Signs and so far we've lightened the letters on the sign, darkened the foreground stuff down here and added some vibrance to the sunset. If I go ahead and open up the history panel you can see that a number of states are available to us and we're going to need these states to successfully use the history brush. And that's primarily why I'm not making this image available. The history states are unique to each editing session. So if I saved and sent you this file, when you opened it up you'd have no history associated with the file and consequently there'll be no benefit to using the history brush. Alright, with that in mind, let's discuss what the history brush actually does. If we look at the image, you can probably see a light halo around the billboard and that's because I wasn't nearly as careful as I should have been with the dodge tool. Wouldn't it be great if we could somehow paint back some of the original image? Well, I'm going to level with you. That's actually entirely possible thanks to the history brush. We can literally go ahead and paint back some of the original image. So first things first, we need to activate the tool. So come over here to the toolbox and click and hold on this option here and we'll want to activate the history brush. Definitely not the art history brush, just the standard history brush is going to serve us well for this project. And as you may have gathered from the name, we're working with a brush, so all the standard controls for a brush are available to us. I'm going to zoom in a touch by holding down the Z key and clicking with the mouse, and I'll just move that into position by holding down the H key and dragging the image around. Alright, that looks great. Now before we use the history brush, we need to set a history source point. And we can do that by coming over and opening up the history panel first and foremost. And at the moment you can see that our very first snapshot, created when we opened the image originally, is active. And we can identify it's active by the little brush icon in this column. We also have the sponged snapshot available to us. And we could change to that, should we want to, by just clicking the empty box in order to activate it. For this example, however, I'm going to stick with the first snapshot, so I'll click the little box and we're ready to roll. Alright, I'll hide the history panel to give us some more workspace, and then I want you to come up here to the options bar and make sure that the mode is set to normal, and the opacity and flow is set to 100%, and then come down to the image and make sure that your brush size is right for the job. And I'm going to make sure that I'm working with a hard brush for this part of the exercise. And then I'll click once here. And then I'll shift click over the other side. And we have just painted back the sky from the original image. Looks much better. I'm going to repeat that on the left side. So I'll click here. And then I'll shift click here. Along the bottom two. So I'll click and I'll shift click. And then finally on the right side, so I'll click once again and then shift click. And that looks great. We have successfully repaired the area of sky around the billboard. The next thing I want to do is just fade back the letters. I like what we've done, but I just think that perhaps we've gone a little too far. So this time we'll want a soft brush. So I'll hit shift left bracket four times on the keyboard and we can use the same history source state as before so no need to go back into the history panel and change that around. The one thing we do want to change though is the opacity. If we leave it at 100% we'll paint all of the original pixels back and we don't want to do that so I'll change the opacity to 25% by dialing in 25 on the keyboard. If that's not working by the way then just make sure that none of the other options are active. Sometimes they can become sticky, especially on the Windows side. So if they are, then you can press the Escape key 
and then dial in 25, that should work. Alright, I'm going to paint over the letters, just taking a little bit of intensity out of them, and that is looking much better, I would say. It's just a minor modification, but those minor modifications can tend to make the big differences, as is often the way in image editing. Okay, that looks great. I'm going to zoom back out by holding down the Z key, along with the Alt key here on the PC, or the Option key on the Mac, and then tab away the panels and the toolbox so we can take in the whole image. Finally here in CS4 I'll right click on the pasteboard and set it to black and just so we get a perfect environment for a spooky billboard found just outside the mountain range that guards Area 51 in Nevada. Well I hope that gives you a good example of how the history brush can help out here inside of Photoshop CS4. The image is now finished I would say uh, thanks to the dodge tool the history panel and the history brush we're now looking much better than we did when we first started the project so thanks for joining us here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you next time